Ann Cornblut of the Washington Post, who's author of the uh, new book about uh, the 80 or the 2008 campaign, Notes from the Cracked Ceiling, and Jim Vanderhei, our old friend from Politico. You heard these governors, you uh, heard the senator. Boy, they seem happy, all of them, that the focus has shifted to jobs. No, no question about it. And I mean, <clears throat> what we hear from the Democrats is really, I think, trying to make uh, lemonade out of lemons from the Scott Brown race. They're saying we're going to put it back on Republicans now. They have to cooperate. They're part of this governing process. And what we heard Governor Rendell do that I thought was so interesting was to really pick apart the jobs bill and say point by point, what exactly do you oppose and what we're talking about? And, you know, we heard Senator Thune respond, well, it's a question of funding and that might get a little confusing in the talking points. This is something that Democrats, I think now in hindsight, wish they'd done on the health care bill, which was to explain it point by point, really call Republicans to account and say, why are you against this? They're going to try it with the jobs bill now. But, but you know, uh, uh, Jim, uh, I thought that uh, Governor Barber made quite an interesting point right at the beginning when uh, we played the soundbite of the president saying, let's tone down the rhetoric. If we don't watch it, people will start believing this rhetoric. Right. And he sort of made the point, well, uh, President Obama talked about a lot of things and there was a lot of rhetoric and uh, his inference was, but, but he didn't deliver on the rhetoric. And that's one of the things that has people uh, upset right now. Right. And I mean, let's be blunt here, there's no way that Republicans want to work with Obama on anything right now. They feel like they have political momentum that they haven't had in years. They feel that the polls are behind them. They look at Virginia, New Jersey, and then what we saw in Massachusetts, and they see that independence in almost every one of those races went two-thirds against, uh, against the Democrats. They want to capture that. They want to be able to continue to draw clear lines between themselves and Obama and Democrats because they think they can realistically win back the House right now. So even if they come out of that, that meeting on Friday, which I thought was one of the most fascinating uh, political events we've seen in some time where Obama was, was in there taking questions from House Republicans, even if they come out and say, yeah, you know, we're willing to work together on a couple of issues, privately they say, no way. We want to defeat him on each and every single issue because that's our, that's our passage back to power. Well, uh, let me ask you this, Ann. Do you think, on the other hand, uh, that the Democrats really want to work with the Republicans, that they want to work with them on anything? Well, I think they definitely want to be able to point to some more achievements going into 2010. I don't think they want the, to be able to be accused uh, in June or July of this year of having done nothing since the start of the year, since the State of the Union. What was interesting in the polling, we saw it in our Washington Post poll coming out of the Massachusetts race, is that voters we're against what's going on, but they still want government to do something. Right. They don't want it to do nothing. And I think, <clears throat> excuse me, I think what we see now, the Democratic Party and Obama doing in that fascinating, you're right, absolutely fascinating visit to the Republicans on Friday and taking questions and saying, I'm going to lasso you. You are in this with me and you have to do something. Well, uh, if I recall your poll, 65% of the people who voted for Obama, I mean for, for, Scott, for Scott Brown, Brown. said they <clears throat> wanted him to work with Democrats to put Republican ideas into legislation. Why wouldn't Republicans pick up on that and say, well, hey, maybe there's something in this for us here? Because they feel like, listen, we've, we're, we're going to defeat him on health care, which has been their rallying cry for the last year. And they want to continue uh, to build off of that. I mean, this health care defeat, that Massachusetts race, to me, was unbelievable. I've never seen such a shift in tone and body posture uh, as we did after that race. You suddenly saw the White House rattled, Democrats rattled, you saw a finger pointing, you saw everyone trying to cover uh, their own back on this. And now health care, which three weeks ago seemed inevitable. There was nobody in this town that would not have bet a lot of money, if you're a bet man, that, they would, that we'd have a health care bill. Now it seems virtually certain we're not going to have a health care bill that looks anything like the one that would have been signed into law a couple weeks do ago. You, do you think that health care healthcare as we know it, I mean, the Senate bill is dead? There would be a couple of weeks, I think, of discussion between the House and the Senate about what they can do, which pieces of it they can do through reconciliation. It's risky. But at this point, the administration wants to move on to jobs, and I think that's the surest sign that that's what they're going to do. Well, there is, there is on that, though. There are a lot of negotiations still going on between Pelosi and Reid. They, they really don't want people to talk about it right now because they want temperatures to cool, and they still think there is an outside chance. The problem is, and, and Ann just hit on this, is that when you start to look at the procedures, how do you actually tactically get to that objective? It's virtually impossible to come up with the vote. So I think what they'll end up doing is coming back and maybe trying to do this piece by piece because if and uh, Rendell got at this uh, uh, in his comments earlier if you take a, the individual pieces a lot of them are popular including with folks at the Chamber of Commerce and inside the Republican Party it's when you put them together and you see what a monstrosity uh, that can be that you start to see a lot of opposition so I it pretty likely I think that they'll try to do some of this stuff in and, smaller and that's pieces. what I think people beyond the Beltway find so hard to believe why can't you find the things that they agree on 
on and pass that uh, into legislation, but somehow it never seems to happen. I want to shift to uh, this uh, trial of uh, Sheikh Khalid Mohammed that was everybody thought was going to be in uh, New York, in lower Manhattan, just a short distance from ground zero. The mayor of New York said, bring them on. He was happy to have it. And then all of a sudden, now the administration is saying, well, maybe not so. And you've got even people like Chuck Schumer saying uh, maybe New York is not the place to put this. Well, what's going on with that, Anne? Well, it's a, been a fascinating unraveling. Back in November when uh, Attorney General Holder made the announcement that they were going to do the trial here, you're right. It seemed like, why not? This is the perfect place. They will ha bring the, him to justice, the, the self-confessed mastermind of the 9-11 attacks, to justice here in New York. Very favorable for prosecutors to do it there, of course. Um, but community groups business leaders started to join in opposition. The governor of New York opposed it from the outset. And over the weeks, there has been this opposition building, really kind of a neighborhood grassroots effort that made its way up to the mayor, who finally turned on it this past week. All along, there have been Republicans who said, no, we shouldn't do this in New York. We shouldn't be doing it in a civilian trial at all. It should be a military tribunal, or we should be doing it in Guantanamo. So you add those two forces together, and there's basically nobody left saying, we should do it in New York. Now, the administration insists no decision has been made, but it's almost impossible to see how the political forces could shift now. I think it's fair to say, don't you, Jim, that maybe they haven't decided where they're going to put it because they don't know who they can get to take the thing. But the fact is, it's not going to be in New York. There's no chance it's happening in New York, and I think uh, it's going to be difficult to do in any other state because you're going to see a similar rebellion with lawmakers from every other state that doesn't want to have Maybe they'll have to find some heavily fortified island off the coast of Florida. <laughs>